At the Imperial Command Center, Director Krennic demands a report. His information officer begins. Director Krennic, our tactical analysis shows that the attacks on the outer interior were a diversion, so the main target, the shield generator, can be destroyed. A rebel fleet exited hyperspace. Moments after the shield generator was destroyed and is currently locked in combat with our space defenses. Fighters have been spotted entering our atmosphere, no doubt coming to give air support to their ground troops. Should we inform Imperial Command and ask for reinforcements? Krennic responds, uncharacteristically calm. No, we won't be informing Imperial Command. We'll be handling this ourselves. Launch all TIE Fighters to meet those X-Wings coming into the atmosphere. And contact our secondary moon fleet to back up our space defenses. But don't tell them we're under attack. They can find that out when they get here. Wouldn't want them informing the rest of the Empire about our failures here, now would we? Just then, another Imperial officer stands up and interrupts Director Krennic. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you told me if anything was weird going on with Jalen Urso to inform you. And I figured that Urso being in his lab and at the shield generator at the same time Qualified as weird. Krennic whispers to himself, I knew it. And then turns to his second in command. I'm going to pay a visit to Galen Urso to get to the bottom of how this happened. I'll be taking two death troopers with me. The rest deploy at the base of this compound. Those terrorists can't be allowed to find out what we're doing here. And at no point are you to contact the rest of the Empire. Is that understood? With unease in his voice, the commander says, Yes, sir. Down on the battlefield, completely pinned down by Imperial walkers, Sagarera meets with his second in command. Sir, I know we're to maintain radio silence, but we're not going to get out of this without help. Back at the Imperial landing platform, Bodhi Rourke begins to hear his intercom going off, and thinks to himself, that's impossible, we're supposed to maintain radio silence. But he recognizes the voice of Saw Guerrera, and he recognizes the desperation in his voice. Bodhi responds, Saw Guerrera, this is Bodhi Rourke. Saw immediately cuts Bodhi off. We need help down here. There's no way we can wait for the rebels to arrive. Bodhi replies, I can't help you, Saw. My mission is to get another vessel. And get it ready to get us off this planet. Sagarera screams into his comm link. You idiot! There won't be anyone left to get off this planet! And then his comm link cuts off. Confused, Bodhi doesn't know what to do. He doesn't even know how he can help. The only ship he has access to right now is the ship they came in, and it doesn't have any weapons. But Guerrero is right. Bodhi won't be able to transport anyone off this planet if they're all dead. And comes to the conclusion that he can help. And he will. Through the barrage of cannon fire, the rebel soldiers see a lone ship 
Heading in their direction. Sagar er get on a comlink. Body Rourke is at you. That's the cargo ship we came in. That thing doesn't have any weapons. Buddy replies, don't worry Saul, I've got a plan. And he points the ship at the closest Imperial walker. Saw screams into the comlink, that's not a plan, that's suicide. We wanted your help, not for you to kill yourself. Buddy says, don't worry Saul, I'm not planning on dying today. Buddy sets the autopilot and then sprints to the back of the ship, and jumps out. The cargo ship rams into the neck of the Adat, causing it to veer to the right, and smash into the Adat next to it. And as the rebels cheer, all three vehicles burst into flames. Bodhi's excitement that his plan worked better than expected, soon turns to terror as he realizes his parachute won't open. Buddy accepts his fate, only to be shocked when his fall starts to slow, and he is lowered to the ground. Dazed and confused, Buddy decides he'll try to figure out this mystery later. He's got to get back to his original mission of finding a ride off this planet. Down on the beach, turret laughs. That wasn't me who made that boy fly, Baze. Are you breaking your own rules? Baze replies, If we're gonna die here anyway, what's the point in hiding anymore? Excited, Chirrut says, I've been waiting for you to say that. And as he launches himself into the battalion of stormtroopers running at them, on both ends of Chirrut's staff, ignite two lightsaber blades. For the first time in decades, Chirrut allows the force to flow through him without limitation. And for the first time in decades, Chirrut feels free. As he cuts his way through Stormtrooper after Stormtrooper. Through the battle, Chirrut yells to Baze. I bet you regret throwing away your lightsaber now. And Baze replies, The only thing I regret is hiding for all those years. We should have done something like this a long time ago. Chirrut says, No, my friend. The forest brought us here for a reason. And this is the exact moment that we were meant to reveal ourselves. Back at the Imperial Command Center, the operations officer yells out, Commander, there are Jedi on the battlefield. With fear and shock in his voice, the commander asks, Are you certain? The operations officer replies, Well, sir, there's a man on the battlefield with a lightsaber. And he's moving things with his mind. I thought those were two big clues that there's a Jedi on the battlefield. The commander brushes off the sarcasm and says, Inform Lord Vader immediately that there are Jedi on Scarif, and deploy all Death Troopers to the Jedi location. The operations officer says, But Commander, Director Credit ordered his Death Troopers to be stationed here on the base. And he ordered us not to involve any other Imperial forces. The commander replies, Well, Darth Vader has an outstanding order regarding Jedi. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather disappoint Director Krennic than Darth Vader. Jyn Erso and Cassian Andor successfully make their way to the agreed-upon rendezvous point and find a group of rebel soldiers. One of them speaks up. Sirs, we're what's left of units 4, 7, and 9. Waiting for orders. Cassian says, Well, since Bodhi's not here with our ride, let's go do what we came here to do. 
and that's blow stuff up. And then Cassian digs into their supplies for a bigger weapon. Jin kneels down next to Cassian and says, I'm not going with ya. I've got something I have to take care of. You take care of yourself, Cassian, and may the force be with you. Cassian yells out, So you're just gonna abandon us, like you abandoned those soldiers on Corellia. Jin looks over her shoulder and says, I hope one day you look into what happened on Corellia. And that day you'll learn about the people you work for, and how little you mean to them. And then Jin turns and walks off towards the command center. <laughs>